The lion is one of the largest, strongest, and most powerful felines in the world, second only in size to the Siberian tiger. They are the largest cats on the African continent. While most big cats are solitary hunters, lions are incredibly sociable animals that live together in family groups called prides. Lions have strong, compact bodies and powerful forelegs, teeth, and jaws for pulling down and killing prey. Their coats are yellow gold, and adult males have shaggy manes that range in color from blonde to reddish brown to black. The length and color of a lion's mane are likely determined by age, genetics, and hormones. Young lions have light spotting on their coats that disappears as they grow. A full-grown male is about 1.8 to 2.1 meters, or 6 to 7 feet long, excluding the 1 meter tail. He stands about 1.2 meters high at the shoulder and weighs 170 to 230 kilograms, or 370 to 500 pounds. The female, or lioness, is smaller, with a body length of 1.5 meters and a shoulder height of 0.9 to 1.1 meters and a weight of 120 to 180 kilograms. Historically, Lions would have been found throughout much of Africa and even in parts of Europe and Asia as well. Today, however, they have been pushed into more isolated pockets of their once vast natural range, with the remaining African lion population now only found in countries in sub-Saharan Africa. There is also still a small population of Asiatic lions found inhabiting a remote part of the Gir Forest in India. Despite their dwindling numbers, lions are actually incredibly adaptable animals that can and will inhabit very dry climates as they get most of the moisture they need from their food. They prefer areas of open woodland, scrub, and long grasslands where there is not only plenty over cover, but also a wide variety of prey. They are only not found in areas of rainforest or far into deserts. Lions are unique among cats in that they live in a group or pride. The members of a pride typically spend the day in several scattered groups that may unite to hunt or share a meal. A pride consists of several generations of lionesses, some of which are related, a smaller number of breeding males and their cubs. The group may consist of as few as four or as many as 37 members, but about 15 is the average size. Each pride has a well-defined territory, consisting of a core area that is strictly defended against intruding lions, and a fringe area where some overlap is tolerated. There are several competing evolutionary explanations for why lions form groups. Large body size and high density of their main prey probably make group life more efficient for females in terms of energy expenditure. Groups of females, for example, hunt more effectively and are better able to defend cubs against infanticidal males and their hunting territory against other females. The relative importance of these factors is debated, and it is not clear which was responsible for the establishment of group life and which are secondary benefits. Lions prey on a wide variety of animals, ranging in size from rodents and baboons to cape buffalo and hippopotamuses, but they predominantly hunt medium to large sized hoofed animals such as wildebeests, zebras, and antelopes. Prey preferences vary geographically as well as between neighboring prides. Lions are known to take elephants and giraffes, but only if the individual is young or especially sick. They readily eat any meat they can find including carrion and fresh kills that they scavenge or forcefully steal from hyenas, cheetahs, or wild dogs. Lionesses living in open savanna do most of the hunting, whereas males typically appropriate their meals from the female's kills. However, male lions are also adept hunters, and in some areas, they hunt frequently. Pride males in scrub or wooded habitats spend less time with the females and hunt most of their own meals. Nomadic males must always secure their own food. Though a group of hunting lions is potentially nature's most formidable predatory force on land, a high proportion of their hunts fail. The cats pay no attention to the wind's direction 
which can carry their scent to their prey, and they tire after running short distances. Typically, they stalk prey from nearby cover and then burst forth to run it down in a short, rapid rush. After leaping on the prey, the lion lunges at its neck and bites until the animal has been strangled. Other members of the pride quickly crowd around to feed on the kill, usually fighting for access. Hunts are sometimes conducted in groups, with members of a pride encircling a herd or approaching it from opposite directions, then closing in for the kill and the resulting panic. The cats typically gorge themselves and then rest for several days in its vicinity. An adult male can consume more than 34 kilograms or 75 pounds of meat in a single meal and rest for a week before resuming the hunt. If the prey is abundant, both sexes typically spend 21 to 22 hours a day resting, sleeping or sitting, and hunting for only two or three hours a day. The lion is the most dominant predator within its environment, meaning that other animals pose little or no threat to them, except for hyena packs that can cause fatal damages to lions, particularly when they are on their own and food is about. Lions are seen as a great threat by many other species, including both giraffes and elephants, which are easily capable of fatally injuring a lion to try to warn it off. More than other species, the significant threat to lions is other lions. In South Africa's Sabi Sands, a group of male lions formed a coalition that's believed to have killed more than 100 lions across a territory. Male lions will often kill one another while attempting to seize control of prides, and then will also kill cubs of prides to ensure a gene pool that's not theirs is passed on. As everyone knows, lions are extremely strong cats and have amazing qualities. But can they cope in the Amazon rainforest? Often called the lungs of the earth, the Amazon rainforest spans nine countries, but about 60% lies in Brazil. Tropical rainforests are home to the largest and the smallest, the loudest and the quietest of all land animals, as well as some of the most dangerous, most beautiful, most endearing and strangest looking animals on Earth. The Amazon is home to more species of plants and animals than any other terrestrial ecosystem on the planet. Perhaps 30% of the world's species are found there. Its biodiversity is astounding. A single bush in the Amazon may have more species of ants than the entire British Isles, while a lone hectare of forests may have more than 500 species of trees, and a single park can have more than 1,400 butterfly species. Competition for survival is fierce. This may explain why over millions of years of evolution, so many highly adaptable species have evolved in this biome. Lions have famously acquired the title of King of the Jungle. However, the title is a little misleading, as lions don't actually live in jungles. This is a simple case of loss in translation. The word jungle has its roots in the Hindi word jangle, which means forest or wasteland. The latter could easily be applied to a savanna. Because lions are not suited to living in dense, humid rainforests, they avoid them in their native range in sub-Saharan Africa, preferring instead to live in savanna, open plains, and green or desert dry bushland. This is because lions' preferred prey are large hoofed animals that roam the plains and savanna, such as buffalo, wildebeest, and zebra and to hunt them effectively, they need wide open spaces. As they pursue their prey, a pride will plot out an attack strategy in formation. This type of hunting would be ineffective in the dense undergrowth of a tropical rainforest, because the depth of field vision required to effectively hunt the type of prey that lions prefer is limited, and the Amazon contains very few large mammalian preys that lions would prefer to hunt anyway. The much heavier and bigger lions would have a difficult time catching the medium to smaller prey animals that are more common in Amazon jungles. As they quickly move through the undergrowth to areas where lions cannot see or reach them, the rainforest isn't known to be a habitat where lions live. 
There have been occasional sightings, but such lions are believed to be passing through. We don't believe that the prey animals or habitat of rainforests are conducive for permanent habitation by lions. As everyone knows, lions are extremely strong cats and have amazing qualities. But can they cope in Siberia? Lions are built for the heat, not cold. African lions evolved in the hot savanna of Africa, where temperatures stay around 104 degrees Fahrenheit or 40 degrees Celsius through most of the year. The extensive geographical region of Siberia, a part of modern Russia, is known for its extreme climate, one of the coldest in the world. The Siberian territory extends from the east of the Ural Mountains in the west to the Pacific coast in the east. From north to south, it stretches from the Arctic Ocean to north-central Kazakhstan and Russia's borders with Mongolia and China. Vegetation in this vast landscape is primarily taiga, with a tundra belt north of the Atlantic Circle and temperate forests south of the taiga. Despite the harsh climate prevailing in Siberia and limited vegetation, Siberia houses a diversity of animals including the Siberian tiger. Although we usually think of lions as the kings of the wide open plains of Africa, ancient Greek accounts suggest that European lions did live in mountainous areas. For example, in the Odyssey, Homer compared Polythemus to a mountain-bred lion. Inhabiting Europe until about the time of the last European Ice Age, the cave lion lived at the same time as Neanderthals and Cro-Magnon man and has been depicted in cave paintings, among other arts. The common name comes from their graphic appearance in caves, although they probably did not live in them. Also, scientists found an astonishingly well-preserved cave lion cub in Siberia's permafrost that lived 28,000 years ago and may even have traces of its mother's milk in it. Although lions can't survive in cold weather, they still visit places that get chilly at night. Lions leave the African savanna when it gets too hot during the day and go into the cool shade of the woods. Lions may also leave their territory to find prey that has moved there to escape the heat. To survive in colder climates, lions would need to grow thick fur coats like tigers, leopards, and jaguars. They would also need to hibernate through the coldest winter months. Daily fluctuations in temperature are a fact of life for all living creatures. Animals have developed mechanisms to adapt to and survive changes from their optimum temperatures. Lions can't control the weather, but they have their own tricks to deal with cold conditions, just as well as warmth. Lions that live in habitats where conditions become extremely hot during the year have developed the ability to disconnect their internal thermostats. By suppressing bodily functions that produce or need heat, they can stay active in the searing sun without overheating. The same goes for lions living in the winter months. Lions can adapt and acclimate themselves to lower temperatures by slowing down their metabolisms and reducing explosive movements, which produce heat. The only problem with this strategy is that it reduces hunting ability, making lions more vulnerable to prey. As for the cold weather enigma, the solution seems to be keeping warm by huddling together. Adult lions are often seen seeking out the warmth in each other's company during very chilly days, even when prey is not scarce. It is also worth mentioning that animals can be selective about the prey they target when hunting in cold weather. When temperatures are low, carnivores tend to focus on herbivores with high body fat content, which generate more heat upon digestion. The Novosibirsk Zoo in Russia has lions that live in an open enclosure all year long, while the newborn cubs die in the cold, and they had to be cared for in a warm place. Adult lions deal with the cold just fine, as long as they are properly fed. If lions could survive the temperatures in Siberia with a few adaptations, we must also consider the competition they would have with other predators in this geographical area. The Siberian tiger, or Amur tiger, is perhaps the most iconic species found in the remote wilderness of Siberia. Given that lions live in groups, Siberian tigers probably wouldn't be too much of a problem for them. However, heavy poaching and habitat loss are the biggest threats to this tiger subspecies so lions may face the same problems. Another important predator in Siberia is the East Siberian brown bear. These bears feed on mountain hares and ungulates and unlike other bears, 
have no love for honey. They are bolder than their European counterparts and often invade human camps in search of food. An encounter between such an example and a lion could end badly for the latter, but a pride could probably deal with it. Lions are great hunters, but they aren't skilled at catching animals in deep snow or crossing wide rivers with strong currents. These factors make it difficult for lions to hunt on colder days or in colder places. However, lions may learn to hunt animals such as wild boar, deer, or elk. Even though lions may survive in Siberia, introducing predators typically ends up being more of a problem than a solution. Siberia already has major species issues. Introducing lions may negatively affect a lot of native populations, including ones that are already vulnerable. Today's lions mostly live in Africa, with a small population restricted to Gir National Park, India. However, they once roamed further afield. The Eurasian lion prowled mainland Europe and Asia 780,000 years ago until its extinction 10,000 years ago. North America had its own lion, aptly named the American lion or cave lion. Some scientists believe this lion evolved from the Eurasian lions that crossed over from Eurasia via the Bering Land Bridge into North America. These first lions that established themselves in North America eventually gave rise to the American lions and then South America's jaguar. Although the American lion successfully inhabited North America for thousands of years, the continent during the Pleistocene was very different from today. Not only that, but the American lion was a different species from today's African and Asian lions. Just because this prehistoric lion thrived in North America doesn't mean that modern lions would do the same. Here, we look at this possibility and ask the question, could lions survive in North America? In order to answer this question, we need to take into consideration North America's climate, habitat, prey, and competition. If we first look at North America's climate and compare it to that of Sub-Saharan Africa, we can find out whether African lions could survive America's climatic conditions. All of Africa's lions inhabit Sub-Saharan Africa. The climate in the central and southern regions include tropical savannas, with some arid and temperate climates. Tanzania is home to the greatest population of lions in Africa. Its climate has wide and varied temperatures from 10 to 20 degrees Celsius, or 50 to 68 degrees Fahrenheit in the highlands, to 31 degrees Celsius, or 88 degrees Fahrenheit in the summer months across the rest of the country. In South Africa's Kruger National Park, temperatures typically range from 16 to 27 degrees Celsius, or 61 to 81 degrees Fahrenheit. Here, there are some 1,600 lions spread across the 7,500 square mile parks. And in Botswana's Chobe National Park, which also has a significant population of lions, the average annual temperatures range from 9 degrees Celsius to 36 degrees Celsius, or 48 to 97 degrees Fahrenheit. Lions are able to thrive in a variety of climates with variable temperatures. In America, the hottest states include Florida, Hawaii, and Louisiana, whilst Alaska has some of the coldest winters around. The southern states have temperature ranges that are more similar to those found where lions naturally live. Areas of California and Arizona are also relatively mild all year round. Broadly speaking, climate doesn't seem to solely determine where lions live. There are plenty of African countries that have hotter and wetter climates than others, and each of these has lions. With the huge variety of climates across the United States, we believe there are plenty of states that lions could survive in if we just considered climatic conditions. If we now look at habitat, we can see if America offers the space and wilderness that lions require. A pride of lions can maintain a territory from anything as small as 8 square miles to a whopping 150 square miles. Lions are the only cats to live in groups or prides. These can consist as many as 40 individuals. They occupy a range of habitats except for tropical rainforests. Instead, they prefer grassland, savanna, dense scrub, and open woodland. These habitats where their prey is most abundant 
and allows them to hunt them using their speed and agility. The grasslands of America's Great Plains could provide the open habitat that lions are used to, but the climate is known for being very cold and harsh in the winter months. These habitats, of course, need to provide an abundance of prey species for lions to hunt. This leads to the prey species that might be available to lions if they lived in North America. Lions are strict carnivores. They are highly adapted to take down medium to large prey. Their sharp canines and claws, coupled with a bite force of 650 psi, make them formidable predators. They have incredibly rough tongues which help them to peel back their prey's skin to get to the flesh underneath. They also function socially, hunting collaboratively as a group, making kills quicker and easier, and enabling them to take down sizable prey. In Africa, their typical prey consists of zebra, wildebeest, antelope, buffalo, giraffe, and wild hogs. In Asia, the lions hunt wild boars, buffalo, antelope, and deer. As Florida seems to have the climate and habitat to enable lions to survive in North America, we will focus on this state when considering prey species. The only deer truly native to Florida is the white-tailed deer. Their numbers were dwindling during the 1930s, but successful management of their population has now resulted in over 700,000 statewide. Other introduced species include red deer, sambar deer, and key deer. However, the numbers of these deers are less than 1,000 individuals for each species, probably not providing enough for lions to prey on. Florida is also home to 12% of America's wild boars. This amounts to huge numbers of them in Florida. It is thought that the damage inflicted on farmland and the native flora and fauna is caused by a population of half a million wild boar. In Africa, the wild boar's equivalent is the warthog. These hairy pigs make up a significant portion of the lion's food and are particularly hunted during the dry season, when other prey species are scarce. Florida's Payne's Prairie Preserve is also home to a handful of bison, not enough to sustain any lions. However, if there were still the large herds that once roamed North America, this could provide the right sort of prey a pride of lions would need to survive. When we consider prey, it looks as if there might not be enough to sustain the hungry prides of lions, where there are larger numbers of ungulates, like the bison that roam Yellowstone National Park. The climate isn't favorable for these big cats all year round. Wild boar may end up being the lion's primary prey if lions were introduced to Florida. But would this be sustainable? If lions had survived in North America from the beginning of the Holocene and become established apex predators, it is possible they would have adapted to the seasonal changes. This could either be through migrating to warmer climates during winter or developing behaviors to cope with the cold. This could include partial or full hibernation, a behavior exhibited by some of America's apex predators, the black and brown bears. They may follow food sources, switching from one prey species in the summer to another in the winter, when they head to warmer states. However, movement around a huge, vastly populated country would not be feasible unless wildlife corridors were built. Finally, let's consider the competition that lions might face in North America. In Africa, lions live in the same habitat as other carnivorous predators. Leopards, cheetahs, and hyenas all live side by side with lions. Whilst they try to avoid each other as much as possible, their territories inevitably overlap. But in Africa's great reserves, there is enough space to allow the coexistence of these species. There is enough prey to go around. The climate is favorable for each of these groups of animals, and they largely survive without too much conflict. In America, bears, wolves, coyotes, and mountain lions could compete for food with lions. These species all hunt and catch similar prey. They are well adapted to North America and are established species. Introduced lions may struggle to compete with America's predators for food and territory. Lions have the advantage of being able to hunt in groups. They could tackle some of America's larger ungulates, like red deer that weigh 240 kilograms or 530 pounds as well as the 1,200 kilogram or 2,600 pound bison. Brown bears also hunt large animals including moose. 
there would likely be competition for the availability of prey. As apex predators, lions play a crucial role in the ecosystem. By controlling the number of herbivores, they consequently manage the grasslands and vegetation. This has impacts right through the food chain, right down to the smallest invertebrates. If lions were to suddenly inhabit North America, their impact would be felt all the way across the ecosystem, unbalancing the fragile existence of those species already found there. If their ancestors had made America their home thousands of years ago, then it is likely other species that are endemic to and characteristic of North America simply wouldn't exist today. We conclude that it may be possible for lions to call North America their home, but probably not if they were introduced there suddenly. If they had time to adapt their behavior and physical characteristics over thousands of years, then maybe they could survive in North America today. But there is a reason that the prehistoric American lion became extinct. There is a reason that today's lions are only found in Africa and a small part of India. Lions, and indeed all of today's cats, have a common ancestor that walked the earth 25 million years ago. Its name, Proilus lemonensis, meaning the first cat. With its body a similar size to domestic cats, this creature was the first step in the lineage that led to the African and Asian lions we see today. The Panthera genus, to which modern lions belong, diverged from the Felidae millions of years ago, likely originating in Central Asia. There is a debate about exactly how long ago this divergence occurred, but it could have been as early as 11 million years ago, or as recently as 1 million years ago. Either way, it was long after Australia split from the rest of Gondwana 99 million years ago. A reason for its unique wildlife, and a reason why lions don't live there. Instead, lions, Panthera leo, evolved throughout Africa and Eurasia. The oldest fossilized lion remains have been found in Tanzania and are thought to be around 2 million years old. During the Middle Pleistocene, African lions were widely distributed across the continent, but the changes in vegetation and climate that occurred throughout the Pleistocene separated lion populations. The growth of equatorial rainforest between 180,000 years ago and 80,000 years ago separated those living in East and Southern Africa from those in the North and West. As the Sahara Desert expanded between 80,000 and 27,000 years ago, western and northern lions became separated. As rainforest declined and gave way to open grasslands, lions moved from west to central Africa. The North African lions dispersed into southern Europe and Asia. The following extinctions of the lions from the European, North African, and Middle Eastern populations limited gene flow between African and Asian lions the only two subspecies of lions left today. So, lions have had a long and turbulent history, and those that survive today are the hardest of the species. But could they survive in Australia, a land where desert covers 18% of its land mass, where average annual rainfall is only 419 millimeters, or 16 inches, and where the hottest temperature recorded in the country hit almost 51 degrees Celsius, or 123 degrees Fahrenheit. If we first look at lions' diets, lions are generalist hypercarnivores. That means that they survive on meat alone. They are adapted to take down prey larger than themselves, hunting alone or in their prides. They are camouflaged within their environment. Their sharp teeth and claws help to latch onto prey, and their speed and agility help them to outrun even the most nimble of antelopes. They are well-adapted apex predators. They hunt a wide variety of prey, mostly ungulates. In Africa, these include zebra, wildebeest, antelope, and buffalo. They have also been observed hunting giraffes and even juvenile elephants. They will also take down warthogs, although these are generally considered too small for a lion to gain enough nutrition from. In India, lions often hunt samba deer and spotted chittle deer. In Australia, there are no native ungulates, but there are plenty that have been introduced to the continent over the past few centuries. Captain Cook introduced several species of placental mammals to Australia in 1770. These ranged from rodents to deer. In fact, six species of non-native deer roam wild in Australia. These include the same samba and chittle deer that lions prey on in India. 
They also include European fallow deer and red deer. Many of these species are considered pests as they destroy vegetation and a range of habitats. Total deer populations have exploded recently, from 200,000 in 2002 to between 1 and 2 million in 2022. If left unmanaged, their population can increase by 30 to 50 percent every year. Wildlife officials are trying to manage their numbers. It seems if lions were introduced to Australia, there would be plenty for them to eat. The habitats favored by the deer are mostly forested, with some venturing out into the open. Asiatic lions prefer hunting in closed habitats, so this would suit them. Red deer weigh similar to wildebeest, and the heaviest males are a similar weight to smaller zebras. Lions would be able to take down Australia's invasive deer and could thrive in their large numbers. Other species that could be considered prey for introduced lions are wild buffaloes. These too were introduced to Australia in the 1800s. Today, more than 160,000 roam the Northern Territory and are having a major impact on the environment. Privately hired musterers round up and export thousands to be exported to Southeast Asia. There have also been calls to help reduce the buffalo populations, but neither of these is having any impact on their growing population. Perhaps lions could solve the problem? It seems, from a dietary perspective, lions would do very well in Australia. But what about the habitat and climate on offer for them? Could they survive this? South Africa, where 13,000 lions reside, has an arid, hot, and cold desert towards the west and center, and a more temperate climate towards the east. The temperate climate is where South Africa's largest populations of lions reside, in the Kruger National Park. Lions typically inhabit grassy plains and savannas, and regions where annual rainfall averages 300 to 1,500 millimeters, or 12 to 59 inches. Temperatures in Kruger typically range between 5 and 35 degrees Celsius, or 43, and 91 degrees Fahrenheit. Due to its immense size, the Australian continent has a huge variety of climates and habitats, some of which would be suitable for lions. Most of Australia comprises desert or semi-arid regions. However, there are small areas of temperate climate in the southeast and southwest fringes. In the north, a tropical climate dominates with grasslands and deserts. This has a dry and rainy season, much like that of South Africa. Rainfall fluctuates massively depending on the region. In the center where it is incredibly hot and arid, rainfall would be too little to sustain lions. Areas that would fall within the range of rainfall that South Africa's lions are used to include the south, east coast, and parts of the north. Although the far north could be considered too wet as it can exceed 3,000 millimeters or 120 inches annually, in Darwin in the north, temperatures average 28 degrees Celsius or 82 degrees Fahrenheit. In the east, temperatures are milder at around 20 degrees Celsius or 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Certain climates within Australia would be suitable for lions. Today, they live in more than 20 different African countries, with a very small population in India's Gir National Park. The climates of each of these countries vary, but lions have found a home there. Australia could provide the right sort of climate and habitat for lions. There are millions of square miles of protected areas across Australia. There are over 80 national parks and reserves in the Northern Territory alone. With Kakadu National Park being the largest in Australia, one of the biggest savannas in the world is the Australian tropical savanna biome, which covers an area of more than 140,000 square miles in Australia's north. In conclusion, we believe that lions could survive in Australia. It seems that there would be plenty of food for a healthy population of lions to live off, and there are certainly some areas with the right type of climate and habitat for lions to live in. Of course, introducing a top predator like a lion could wreak havoc on the ecosystem. The introduced species already posing problems for Australia's wildlife such as deer, buffalo, and rabbits thrive because there are no natural land predators for them in Australia. Introducing one of the world's most successful predators to Australia would certainly shake things up a bit. Dingoes, introduced to Australia about 5,000 years ago, have been blamed for the extinction of Tasmanian devils and the Tasmanian wolf on Australia's mainland. Although this theory has since been debunked, it shows just how fragile an ecosystem can be, and the introduction of a foreign predator could prove disastrous. Having said that, 
seeing lions in Australia's outback would be an incredible sight. Several lion subspecies are found in the wild. Two of them are the African lion and the Asiatic lion. When the two subspecies of Panthera leo are seen side by side, differences between them might be relatively minor, but appearances don't tell the whole story. Asiatic lions once prowled from the Middle East to India. Now, only a fraction of these magnificent animals survive in the wild. The Gear Forest dry teak woods were once a royal hunting ground. Today, they are a reserve where these at-risk big cats are heavily protected. Asiatic lions are relatively smaller than their African lions, on average and in maximum figures. Adult males typically weigh between 353 or 420 pounds, or 160 to 190 kilograms, while adult females weigh between 240 to 264 pounds, or 109 to 120 kilograms. The largest Asiatic lion on record measured 9.7 feet, or 2.9 meters from the tip of its nose to the tip of its tail. The male Asiatic lions have sparse and exceptionally short mane with their ears visible. Another standout mane feature is the color. The short mane is dark and less developed. Male African lions have a more prominent, fuller mane that covers the whole head and falls back over the shoulders. The mane signals how healthy a male is to females, which they use to attract them and intimidate other rivals. Other than the male's sparse mane, the most distinguishing characteristic of the Asiatic lion is a longitudinal fold of skin that runs along the belly. This trait is found in all Asiatic lions and very rarely in African lions. Interestingly, those from the West Central Africa region and the Barbary lions do have the same belly fold. Around 50% of Asiatic lions have what are called bifurcated infraorbital foramina. These are small holes in the skull that allow nerves and blood vessels to pass to the eye. If a lion's skull has two of these, it's an Asiatic lion. For whatever reason, African lions only have one infraorbital foramen. Their eyesight is just as strong as the Asiatic lions, so there's no particular benefit to having two infraorbital foramina versus just one. Male Asiatic lions do not live in prides. In fact, they tend to only associate with female lions when mating or at large kills. Otherwise, they live alone or in a partnership with another male lion. These partnerships allow male Asiatic lions to control larger territories and more easily scare off rival males. In Africa, every lion pride has a resident male or group of males, which defend their prides vigorously against other males. Pride takeovers occur every two years, during which the suckling cubs of the defeated males are killed. This ensures that the new male will pass along his genes. So, could Asiatic lions survive in Africa? Africa's wildlife is diverse and abundant. No other continent has the diversity of wildlife found in Africa, which spans the entire climatic spectrum from scorching heat to freezing cold. The area's diverse vegetation has attracted mammals, birds, reptiles, fish, and insects. Among them are more than 40 primate species ranging in size from tiny galagos to massive gorillas, as well as a diverse range of antelopes, gazelles, and other hoofed animals, and 70 carnivore species. The bird life is so abundant, with over 1,500 species found in the south of the Sahara. Africa also has the world's fastest land animal, the cheetah, the world's largest bird, the ostrich, and the world's largest land animal, the elephant. The size and strength differences between African and Asian lions are minor, and the majority of this is due to habitat and food availability rather than genetics. That is why zoo Asiatic lions are larger than wild Asiatic lions in gear because they are fed enough food and don't live in areas where trees get in the way. In addition, grassland Asiatic lions were larger than those found in forests like gear. The prey animals in the gear forest are generally smaller than those in Africa, so hunting groups tend to be smaller as well. This likely explains why pride size is so small. The most commonly taken prey species in the gear forest is the chittle deer, which weighs only around 110 pounds. These account for around 45% of known kills. 
The prey animals of the African savanna tend to be larger than those in the gear forest of northwest India. African lions will frequently tackle prey weighing as much as 600 to 800 pounds, such as a wildebeest and zebra, and will occasionally take down African buffalo, which weigh between 1,000 and 2,000 pounds. This requires cooperative hunting techniques, which may explain why African lions live in larger prides. If wild Asiatic lions from gear were released into the savanna, they would probably survive. They are only around 15 kilograms smaller, and even though males live separately and females live in small groups in gear, that would not stop them from hunting wildebeest, kudu, and other medium-sized prey, although it might hamper their ability to hunt large prey like Cape buffalo. They may also change their behavior pattern and live in prides like African lions after a few generations. They could live in woodlands as well, which are similar to gear. However, Adaptation in Africa would not be without its problems. They would probably have limited immunity to the diseases that are prevalent in the African continent. Even the more accustomed African lions frequently fall prey to epidemics. Another issue with adapting to the African continent is that they would most likely be unable to interbreed with African lions. The two subspecies are genetically rather different, and experiments in India to interbreed them resulted in very weak offspring. A small population of Asiatic lions introduced into a foreign country would likely face breeding challenges if they survive the droughts and diseases, and subsequent generations could become weak due to inbreeding. That said, if the introduction could be done in a carefully planned manner and their conditions monitored over time, some of these risks could be reduced and Asiatic lions could survive in Africa. Now that you've heard our opinion, we want to know yours. What do you think would happen if Asiatic lions were relocated to Africa? We are waiting for your answers in the comments. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.